<laughs> beer, always beer. What did you take, Kathy? Uh, beer. Well, I'm going to take that away from you because you're going to click it. <laughs> you might have to talk a little bit louder. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. You ready? It's just that you can't hear me, that's all. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. No, I mean, it's oh. probably just that I'm oh, talking right at that yeah. level that's yeah. hard to hear. This would be a great place to start with the intros. You go ahead. Oh, are we, are we on camera? We are. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm Barb with River City Yarns. This is my sister, Cynthia. <laughs> We're a little local yarn shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and we're, we love to chat about all the things that we've been doing in our store, some of the events that we've been holding, and um, give people a sense of kind of what it's like to run a, a local yarn shop. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Yeah. 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 And uh, So welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We should probably explain the little joke that we had just before we did the introduction, where my sister was teasing me about being hard of hearing. That's because as we get older, it's because we lose you are certain things. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Apparently, apparently, I've been tested, and I am a little bit hard of hearing, and I'm trying to cope with the idea of getting hearing aids. It's just, it's a big hurdle in my life. So yeah. that's what's going on for me personally. Must have been too much rock music when you were... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it's just I have someone nattering in my ear all day long. <laughs> it's all in good fun. Yeah. Anyway, um, today we thought we would talk a little bit about what inspires us as yarn shop owners um, mm. and, the, and the things we do to inspire our customers. So we've got yeah. a couple of big things happening this month in the store. That's right. Yeah. We have Christmas happening. Christmas in July. Christmas yeah. in July. It's a tradition here at River City Yarns. Every uh, July, we like to start early and make sure that we've got Christmas knitting kind of wrapped up in time for the holidays, which, <laughs> which never happens anyways. <laughs> We're always thinking of some project that we still want to do on Christmas Eve. But um, the intent is good. and. Um, Cynthia has created a whole lineup of incredible workshops that we're going to be going out with. Yeah. So yeah. thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. We're, we're in the middle of it, actually. We've got all kinds of workshops that have been going mm -hmm. on and things that are happening. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. The other, yeah. the other big oh, tradition we have... The other thing is our sale. We have a big sale every year in July. This year um, it's running for the whole month. We call it our O Canada Sale. And um, we've got great things. Every week we come out with something new. Um, something to, again, inspire our customers. We talk a lot about some of the products that we use here, and so we like to try and put some of those on sale so we can share some of the very best things that we love with people who shop here. Including? Including. What did you put on sale? Oh, <clears throat> Addies. Yeah. yeah, we talk a lot about Addies. So we put those on sale, and that really um, was a fun, fun thing to do. Yeah, and then we've got some other special yarns we that are coming do. out. Mm -hmm. We do, yeah. Part of what we do is look for um, special yarns out on the market, things that are unusual and unique, and so we're going to be rolling out some of those too. Right, yeah. We can't tell you about them because they're, you know, surprise, but um, keep in touch with us on our newsletter and our social media channels because we, we I like to brag that we've got somebody really great who helps us do a super job on social media. We do. So you'll see pictures of the things that we've got going out like a few days before they go out and that's the best way to connect and find out about what's going on here, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, social media has been, um, you know, as, as business owners, social media has been a bit of a learning curve for us. A huge and <laughs> learning curve for me. <laughs> we've got uh, a Twitter feed, um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, we're on Ravelry, we have a Ravelry group, uh, we have an online store, um, and we have a YouTube channel, so there's a lot of ways that you can connect with us um, outside of the phone or coming into the store. And we like to use those channels to communicate with people here in Edmonton, but around the world as well. So um, yeah, uh, subscribe and um, follow us on social media, and that's a really great way mm -hmm. to stay in touch and 
see and hear about things that are happening in the store. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought I'd add to, like today, we're filming here in the store. We've got our kind of Christmas in July theme um, display behind us. And, you know, don't be surprised if you see people, you know, walking around too. We've got people restocking our shelves. It's a Sunday here. It's a quiet Sunday, yeah. We've got the doors closed, mm -hmm. but uh, it's um, when the store is closed, that's the time for us to do a lot of restocking and cleaning and things like that. Right. Plus, we wanted to show you a different segment of the store each time we went on air. Mm -hmm. So um, we started off our episodes upstairs, and then we moved downstairs onto the main floor, and it's a bit easier to film down here when the store is closed. Yeah. yeah, but you're right. We have our Christmas in July uh, display behind us, and it shows some of the samples from our workshops. Um, we run a lot of workshops in July um, based on our Christmas theme, but those uh, projects can also be done outside of a workshop. You don't need to take a class necessarily to do them. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the projects that have been very popular and new this year in case you'd like to follow along and... Um, on our tradition and start some things in July as well. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about what we've been up to. Okay. Yeah. So um, you were away. I was away. Yeah, yeah. You went to Columbus, Ohio. Right. Yeah. To? To TNNA. Yeah. Um, well, I think we put out a little YouTube video on part of that. We did. But, you know, part of what Cynthia and I do uh, as yarn shop owners is shop. It's so, a really tough job. What does TNNA stand for? It stands for the National Needlework Association. And it's kind of a members only uh, conference that happens twice a year. I think, you know, lots of people will find information uh, on the website about it if they Google it. But really what it is, is it's a gathering of yarn companies and independent dyers and book publishers and um, needle so basically Craft manufacturers, makers. wholesalers, independent artists, anybody involved in the needle craft trade. So it could include right. things like embroidery. It um, does, yep. Uh, what else? So, but mostly knitting, would you say? Needlework, I think, too. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd say 75% of the show is yarn related. Right. And you're right. In our video, so if you go on to our playlist on YouTube, you'll you'll see Barb Visits TNNA and you can mm -hmm. watch that video. And we talked about some of the people that you met there, mm -hmm. but um, there were some that we that we didn't talk about and we're going to talk about in this podcast so right. you, can, you can get some more information about some of the things that inspired Barb uh, to bring back his products in the store. Right. So yeah. you go to TNNA as a buyer. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and you know the other part about it is the social aspect too. I mean, um, so many shop owners go there, and it's so nice to be able mm -hmm. to have a dinner or you know a breakfast or a coffee with other yarn shop owners, because um, this business can be challenging, and so it's so nice to be able to network with people who have the same kind of uh, business that we do, and. Uh, talk about best practices so I do lots of that too right and it's too bad that you couldn't have come with me because <laughs> you know that was um, something that's been a lot of fun we've gone yeah. to them in the past together yeah and so it's been it was sad that you couldn't come this year but the shopping it, it, it is it, it overwhelms me I find it I find it to be um, it's it a, energizes me <laughs> Barb loves to shop but it is it's a huge huge show yeah and it takes I think you're there for three days, days. so it takes days and days to go through all of the um, all the booths. Mm -hmm. There's um, special events and dinners and um, meetings with reps and things like that. So it's all um, it's all very very busy. And Cynthia, I didn't even get through it this year. Usually I get through the entire thing, but there was just too much going on this year. Yeah, yeah. So, so thank you for taking the bullet on that one and oh, going yeah. to <laughs> and going to fun. TNNA. I stayed home and managed the store. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then when Barb got back, I went camping for a week, and Barb managed the store. And yes. And I went to the quiet solitude of Jasper, where I could just sit in a camp chair around a fire and uh, lose my voice a little bit because smoke does that to me. <laughs> you like that, though, don't you? I do. I do. I got like a chance that. to get away with Mike. Yeah. And yeah. Enjoy the quiet of nature and some knitting, some biking. We're so Lots lucky that we're close to Jasper, right? I mean. It's just a four, three or four hour yeah. drive and yeah. you're there. We went before Canada Day because this year Canada turns 150 years old. Um, or actually I think we're on our 151st year now. Anyway, 
Um, so we went before Canada Day, so we could come back before the big rush. But absolutely, what a what a lovely place to go. Mm -hmm. um, spend some time in the mountains, and um, the weather was really nice. And we biked into town each day to go to Tim Hortons and get our coffee and some Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, and we're there with all the other campers in Jasper, enjoying the enjoying you know that that distinctive taste of Tim Hortons coffee and, uh, oh. and of course. I love it. You know, you, you jump out of your car, or you get there, and you open the door, and like you can just smell pine mm -hmm. needles. Like it's just amazing. Yeah. Right. We're so lucky. Yeah, we are. Cheers oh, to I'm that. Glad. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Happy, happy. <laughs> Holy. Here's the holidays. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So. You were at TNNA, and you met some amazing people, and you started some projects, right? Did right. You, you do, you've got some whips to show us. I do have some whips, but okay. I just wanted to chat a little bit about um, the fashion show at TNNA oh. before we move on. Okay. There was um, one of the best things about going to the show is the fashion show. Every year, the yarn companies and independent dyers and um, fashion designers, people who design patterns and garments, bring everything together and they do a fashion show. And seriously, it's like a runway out of Vogue. It's like um, amazing. <laughs> it's the other thing that sucks about getting older. <laughs> but a, a, a great use for a sock ruler is just a little bit of fanning. Keep talking. <laughs> okay. Oh man. All right, so I got to see kind of like the latest trends in knitting. And I also got to sit in on a presentation by Tricia Malcolm from Vogue Knitting, yeah. who talked a lot about um, colors and trends. The whole knitting industry, as well as everybody else, probably furniture and home decor, they all work on colors from Pantone. And so this, the knitting business is no different. This year, the color was greenery. And it's such a beautiful shade of green. Really? Yes. Yeah. Interesting. It's, it's all um, inspired out of, you know, nature and growth and renewal. That was the 2017 colorway. There's, they're coming up with 2018 now as well. Right. But um, that, so we saw a lot of that at the show. Uh, also saw lots of trends in knitwear garments. Mm -hmm. So sweaters are still really big, big chunky ones, oversized sweaters. Lots of uh, Ruanas. I'm working on one right now. And um, long jackets, vests, coats, that sort of thing. Wow. Um, head to toe knits. They took things like um, the same color and layered it all. So there would be a, a sweater over top of another sweater. Lots of light um, fabrics, too, so yarns that are a little bit more. Um, Fine mm -hmm. gauge, like a fingering weight yarn mm -hmm. used for a sweater. Yep. to give it drape. Combined with a big <clears throat> chunky cowl over uh -huh. top, so it was really neat. The other thing I think that was so interesting was embellishment. I saw fringe and mm -hmm. pom poms everywhere. Oh, Every so piece of garment. Pom poms are still a big thing. Hey? Pom poms are still yeah. a big thing. Tassels too, like scarves with mm. tassels on the corners. Yep, really hot. Interesting. And lots and lots of fringe. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, fringe is a great way to add length to a garment without adding a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And um, you can use you can use different yarns so you get a contrasting color. Yeah, that's a it's a great idea. It's a great idea. Yeah. The other thing that they talked about a little bit was um, knitting with activism messages. Oh, you meaning? know like, well that whole um, pussycat hat kind of project, right? that that's um, a real theme, a very popular thing in knitting, which I thought, it, it kind of hit here, but it certainly wasn't as popular here right. as it was in the U.S. Right. Um, but, you right. know, I think that's kind of an interesting um, trend or things to, to see that people taking stands for things. Right, so using, using knitting. your craft to symbolize something meaningful in yeah. your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as yarns go, you know, I think um, that some of that we already knew that, you know, chunky is still really, really popular and hot. Um, but what helped us this year was um, thinking about sweaters and looking for really good quality wools and um, 
yarns with the right twist on them to, to make sweaters out of. I think that's where we're going. Right, we're right. And, and I think, um, to me, it's a bit comforting to know that the chunky yarns are staying as accessories, mm -hmm. and we're using finer yarns to, to do sweaters and garments. Because I find, you know, there, there was a time there where you did the chunky sweater, but I put that on and it just made me look chunkier. Yeah. So I, I, like, I like the trend that's, you know, that's light and cool, layering if you need it, um, but still gives you lots of drape. Yeah. And um, a nicer, I think a nicer silhouette when you wear it. Yeah. Well, and you know, too, um, we kind of joke about it, but we're at that age now where um, we get hot like wearing wool yeah. and chunky yarns and stuff. So I've been looking in particular for blends. And um, this one that I'm wearing yeah, here. Yeah, this is gorgeous, yeah. Barb. Um, so this is the Easy Folded Poncho. This is the Easy Folded Poncho. And this is done in Ab Elb Lino. We've right. had this yarn in our store for some time and it's kind of like a quiet, secret, incredible, beautiful yarn. Mm -hmm. So it, this is 100% lambs, no, 85% lambs wool and 15% linen. Yes. And oh, sorry. It's, I got those reversed. It's 15% wool and 85% linen. Is it? Yeah. So that's, no, you had it, no, you had it right the first time. 85% virgin wool. It's a little confusing because in German it looks like 85% wool and 15% linen. Yeah. But then down below the next line where it's in English it says wool 15, linen 85. You knit with no, it. No, no, no. Um, 85 virgin wool, 15 uh, linen. And then it goes on 85 in French. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. It's just the wrapping on the sentences. Okay. Okay, we'll cut that part out, okay? <laughs> no, Ellie Susan, it stays in. Oh, my God. Anyway, Anyways, you knit I with knew, it. Yeah, I knit with it. And I'm, I'm still knit, knitting with it. I did this poncho out of it. And it's so nice because that little bit of linen <laughs> really is cool. This piece is just one of those nice pieces that's not too hot to wear. Here it's the middle of summer here in our shop and it's just cozy and lovely and warm. I, I really love what you did with the striping, you like the striping in there. Yeah. So how many balls did you use? Cynthia, I only used two of Seriously? this of this one. Two of this one and one, and one of this one. Yeah. Yep. And I have like three quarters right. left. So you could probably do a if you wanted to do the cowl yeah, that is in the yeah. pattern. You could probably do a cowl for it as well. Yep. Cast on. <laughs> Already. Yeah, look how much I had left. Yeah, yeah. So That's yeah. a really good deal. I so mean, I love it's, it's nice when you don't have to weave in all those ends, right? When you can use just a couple of balls to... Yeah, to there were a few ends to weave in with the stripes. But yeah. I just I just thought it was uh, it's, it's a nice little touch. That, that stripe is striking. I think it's really nice. Yeah, and it yep. goes see you on the shoulder where you sew it together. Right. So you just so lined up your I tried. Lined up your stripes. Yeah, you did a great job. You did yeah. a great job. That's beautiful. Yeah, so I think you know, blends are kind of a nice thing um, to look at. And we're looking at some merino and silks too. This is a another couple of right. swatches. So you're doing some more swatches. That's the other thing about being a yarn shop <laughs> owner. Before I buy any yarn, I like to do a swatch up and see what it's gonna you know, be like, I'll wash it and knit it up and wash it and just see how um, it responds. And then if we really like it, right. we bring it in, right? And so that's a that's kind of a luxury though. That's a, let's, let's chat about that for a minute because okay. when you buy yarn, you can't get a sample necessarily. You can't get one skein just to try out. Right. If, you're, if your yarn rep is really nice, they may or may not you know, let you have a ball of it. Mm -hmm. um, but you have, might have to go out and actually buy it yourself to, oh, I've done that a, to be able a lot to of swatch times. it, right? Yeah. And then other times you just have to you just have to go with you know with the recommendations of the yarn rep. Mm -hmm. um, because when you order this yarn, um, tell us about that. What's the what's the ordering process? Oh right? well you know a lot of times you're putting your order in six months before the yarn even arrives. A lot of our distributors here in Canada have to combine orders from stores all across the country and, and put them in bulk because they're often, some of them are flown here, but oftentimes they come on big um, containers on ships. 
and everybody pools their orders, we bring it into a port, and then they're distributed out. Mm -hmm. So it takes yeah. a long time to get it, and oftentimes, you know, you may not get what you order either. If the yarn's <laughs> really popular, we've had a lot of... Back orders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, or, the bane of back orders. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's tough. So, you know, you kind of have to um, put that into consideration right. when so you're ordering. So there are also minimum orders that you have to make. Right. Um, and to set up an account, you also have to um, put in a, a larger order sometimes to begin with. And yeah. then the yarn doesn't come in individual skeins. It comes in bags. And right. bags of 10 at minimum usually, right? Right. Yeah. And then, you know, that's the other thing. Sometimes, you know, you think you make really good choices, but sometimes you don't. So this is, you know, right. where you sometimes have to um, have a, a big sale and get rid of things to make room <laughs> for, for others' yarns to come in. Right. Because, so again, let's talk about this yarn. that You've got mm -hmm. a, a swatch made out of, and mm -hmm. you, you obviously like it. And I then do. Um, tell us about how you, how you decide what to order and how much to order. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this yarn is um, from Mirasol, mm -hmm. and it's a brand that we really love. It's a feel-good brand. Um, they support children in um, Peru. In Peru, and yeah. they have a whole uh, residence and education right. cooperative there. Mirasol.com. We'll put that in the show notes. Um, it's a, a great website to visit and see what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, what's this yarn that you've got here? This one is called Salka Nina. Mm -hmm. and it's a new one. It's a single. Right. And um, I really thought a lot this year about sweaters because we've got a big retreat coming in November and people wanting to knit sweaters. I'm thinking about Hohi's Boxy right. and Anne's sweaters and right. different things. So it's Hohi Locatelli who's mm -hmm. coming. Um, Anne Bud uh, is doing a retreat uh, called Knit for Fun Retreat, and she's coming, and also Susan B. Anderson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yarns that are a little lighter, maybe um, have some drape to them. Right. And this is one that we've fit that bill. We've had Sulka before. But right. this is a different gauge. That's right. Yeah. This is a finer yarn, although it does, it says it's like a four. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, it still knits up fairly quickly on a four millimeter needle, 24 stitches. Right. Very soft and um, I this think This has alpaca in it? Yeah, <clears throat> this one is, no, uh, oh yes, merino, baby alpaca, and silk. Right, right. Yeah, and the percentage is 60, 20, 20. Yeah, it's got, it's got really nice elasticity. So that's that merino wool in there mm -hmm. that's um, giving it lots of elasticity. And um, then you knit this on a four millimeter needle? Yeah. yeah. I think I might have used a four and a half. Okay. So yeah, but, I mean, yeah. you know, as a sweater, it's got, it, there's no see-through in here. It's knit looser, mm -hmm. right? Um, but you can't see through it. You, you, you can you can't even see through it if you hold it up. So obviously the singles give it a little bit of... Um, Halo mm -hmm. uh, in it, so you get um, you get that that wool and taking it, up the space. It's got a, a nice twist on it too, so I think it's going to wear really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's gorgeous. The other one I just want to show you is from the show as well, and this is um, there was a company that I've been watching for quite a while, mm -hmm. and um, they're Blue Sky Fibers. Right. So we're going to bring them in. Do you remember what happened when we were in Minneapolis? I do. We went into a yarn shop because that's another thing we always do. Wherever we go, we visit local yarn shops and we talk to the staff and the owners and mm -hmm. we um, investigate all the nooks and crannies and look for things that we have or things we don't have. And um, I, I found Barb knee deep in a pile of wool stock. <laughs> that's right? right. This is a yarn that, uh, you know, we talk about um, buying it wherever we can get it. We, I saw this little kit in this shop in Minneapolis and I just bought it because I couldn't get the yarn here in Canada. And so uh, this is it. This is what I found. Here, I'll hold that for you. Okay. And then you knit this hat. And then I knit the hat. So, so that's your hat. finished object. Yeah. yeah. It's a cute little slouchy hat. Mm. There's 21 colors, so all the colors of the line was in this bag and I thought, perfect, because this is like having a swatch of all the different colors in right, there. Right. I can decide which ones we want to bring into the shop. And um, then knit this cute little hat. 
So we've got these kits that great. we're going to be launching. Great. And so the yarn. Great way to use up mini skeins too if you've got them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And feel this yarn. Look at the spring in the balance. Oh, yeah. So this is 100% wool. Yeah. And I believe this is a uh, domestic wool from the U.S. Is that um, right? 100% fine highland wool. You know, Cynthia, I think this might be made in Peru. Oh, okay. I think this might be Peruvian, but I've got to um, double check that. Okay. It certainly is nice. It's, it's um, it, as Barb said, it's got a lot of bounce to it. So, you know, you can mm -hmm. crunch it and you can feel the fibers just kind of the elasticity of the fibers under your fingers and then the colors are really nice They're they've done beautiful. a beautiful job so how how many colors are you bringing in um again i have to go back to my paperwork i'm not exactly sure if there was we brought in a lot there wasn't a lot we didn't bring in <laughs> we also brought in their baby alpaca okay and because they have a cute canadian inspired cowl it's called albany Oh. And it looks like our Hudson's Bay uh, blanket. Inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, we good. were bringing in that. And they're bulky. They're really chunky yarn because chunky yarn is great for accessories. Right, and, right. Oh, and, fabulous. Yeah, it keeps us warm in the nine months of winter that we have good. here. <laughs> good. So Blue Sky is a new yarn line that we're bringing in. And mm -hmm. that was one that you saw at TNA. We saw it at other stores before mm -hmm. before TNA, but... Um, we jumped on it. And I, I think, too, the wool stuff, now that I think about it, I'm quite sure it's Peruvian because it's got a really um, good price tag on it, too, which is right. another thing that we're always looking for, the most value that we can find out of our, our yarns, and that was a good buy. Right. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. What else did you find at TNA that you that you brought home that maybe we didn't talk about in the other video? Anything else? Hmm. I think we pretty much covered it. Okay. Do you can you think of anything? Were you asking that because you um, knew I missed something? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm I'm thinking through all the all the people that um, you talked to. In our, in our last video on, I think, oh. Blue Sky Alpacas. Oh, you did have a chat with the ladies from Espas Trico. Yes, yes, yes. I bumped into Melissa and Lisa. Hi, guys. <laughs> oh, they from were... Our, our, one of, uh, another one of our favorite yarn shops in yes. Montreal. Yes, you've been there. I have, yeah. I've been there. We've been there on separate um, personal trips when we've gone with our families and yeah. friends to Montreal. Um, so we loved that shop, and I actually got to bump into them. It was great. And they were uh, they were filming they were filming some or taking some pictures um, post TNNA. Yes. And uh, so we'll we'll add some of those photos and maybe a little clip of the video into this podcast so you can see Barb's yeah they, interaction. We were all lamenting about how much money we had spent. <laughs> my and my suitcase, I had to kneel on it because it wouldn't close. <laughs> Well, here I am at TNNA, and look who I run into. <laughs> Melissa and Lisa from Espastri Co. They're doing a little filming here for their podcast. It's been exhausting. <laughs> yes, it has. Can you tell? We're, we're tired. This is what happens when you're tired. You do ridiculous things. You do ridiculous things. Oh, my gosh. We spend all our money. Yes. Okay, turn and your head. Looks like they've got some pretty good uh, okay, turn your, close your eyes. purchases here, too. No, put your head on the side. It was better. <laughs> Look at me, like a hundred photos of a dead, a dead Amelia. I love it. My camera's jiggling because I'm laughing. <laughs> oh my god, that's you guys the best. crack me up. Yeah. Well, that's that's the other thing too about shopping in the U.S., right? For us Canadians, there's there's always that exchange rate to deal with as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. we and uh, we I spend a lot of time too at our Canadian friends booths. I just want to say a shout out to Carolyn Sommerfeld, right? At Ancient Arts Yarns, she had a beautiful, beautiful booth right. this year. And you uh, stopped by Louette as Louette. well, and you tried out a new loom. Yes, that they, they have. have. An Erica. <clears throat> That's going to be so interesting. It's like rigid heddle mm -hmm. knitter's loom, sort of. But it has more shafts to it? Yeah. It's okay. I, I'm not exactly well, sure how it works. but We it, may have to bring one in. Stay tuned. We okay. are, yeah. <laughs> All right. And um, the other one was Richard DeVries. Great. He's coming out with new cocktail kits that are going to be a lot of fun this summer. So Good, good. Yeah. Okay, well, well, we'll get back to Richard DeVries at the end of this podcast. Okay. Okay. So, um... 
finished objects. You've got yeah. a hat. You've got a poncho. What do you have? What do I have for finished? Well, I'm wearing um, I'm wearing a shawl that I knit uh, quite a while ago. But this is um, this is called a hat for Harriet. It's a design by Kate Davies, and it's made out she's of from Sweet the Georgia. Shetlands, right? Uh, she's she's definitely Scottish. Um, I'm not sure if she's from the Shetland Islands or not. But yeah, she's she's a designer that I personally mm, like. Me too. Um, and uh, this is Sweet Georgia Cash Silk Lace. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a gorgeous yarn, and Barb gave me, Barb gifted me two skeins of it to do, a, to do a sample project, so I'm wearing it. It's really nice. I can't tell you how soft this is. It's just it, it's They're beautiful. luxury fibers, and you know we need to do a statement piece with it, right? This, this is what you use your specialty yarns mm -hmm. for, right? Yeah, everybody needs yeah. one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And right, so yeah, um, last month we had a customer come into the store who was doing, um, who asked for some help finding yarn um, to do a bag that she'd seen on Ravelry. It was one of the feature projects on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. And that was Rhonda, and I, I helped Rhonda out, and then I was really inspired by that myself. So um, I think what really attracted me to that project was that it only used one skein of yarn. And it's felted, and I'm but it was a big things. skein. Big skein, yeah. Cascade Ecological wool. So um, yeah, I, I paid for the pattern and uh, downloaded it and went home and knit a bag. Isn't that and cute? Here it is. Yeah, oh my God, it's called the it for you. sure. It's called the Boho Knot Bag Felted Purse. It's uh, one skein of Cascade Ecological wool, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a it's quite an easy knit. And then you so just the handle felt just it in your yeah goes through like this yeah and away you go and away you go oh, that's yeah so cute isn't it so actually Rhonda came back um, and she picked up three more skeins of Cascade wow. Ecological wool so she's gonna make some more I love the fabric yes I feel how beautiful this wool felt yeah I know it's it's great. Um, so Cascade Ecological Wool is uh, feltable wool, obviously. It's a chunky yarn. You normally knit it on a 5.5 millimeter needle. This one's knit on a 6. And then it takes, it, it may take, depending on your washing machine, it may take several washings to get it to felt properly. I brought it here to the store and used our Wonder Washer, which we've talked about before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that and, was that's And you're that's using my, it now as a project bag? Oh yeah. So in, that's great. in here I've got my whip. Um, this is kind of funny. We we did a um, we did a knit along for Ann Bud, right? Um, and we're doing um, another one for Susan B. Anderson and for Hohi Locatelli uh, before they come. But um, June was the month for doing our Ann Bud knit alongs, and I didn't finish my project, but I got a good ways through it. Um, so I I Let's wanted see. to show you this. These are called the Ooh. Turvy Topsy socks. And what's cool about them is that Ann Bud writes the pattern so that you can knit these socks either from the cuff to the toe or from the toe up to the cuff. And I decided to do the toe up version. And I love, 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 love the way that she wrote out the heel for these socks. Um, you probably can't see, but I'll, I'll, put a, I'll, I'll put a picture in so that you can get a, a close up on it. But if you look at this heel, uh, what's amazing about it is that it looks like the same kind of heel that you would do if you knit it from the cuff down. It's a mm -hmm. heel flap with a proper gusset. And with a little peak kind of, Yeah, right? and you know, we were talking last time about afterthought heels and how mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to get them to fit. And So I've got really high hopes that this sock's going to fit me perfectly. Oh, lovely. So this is the Turvy Topsy sock. So this is part of my... And bud knit along. What yarn um, did you use? I used Adam and Eve. Can I touch? Starry Night. Yeah. Well, this is Starry Night. This is, is our colorway, mm -hmm. the one that Cynthia and I designed. That's right. Um, These might be a little bit too big for you. <laughs> <laughs> they, they look like they might. Fit She's going to put it on her foot right now. She does this to me all the time. Oh, no, so. no, I would not. <laughs> but they look like, I mean, they're really. You have such a tiny, petite little foot, and mine's such a honking big one. <laughs> I used my sock ruler, so I'm pretty sure these socks are going to oh. fit me. But, you know, we'll never know. We'll see. I do, I do really like it, and um, I am going to use this pattern again. 
and again and again. Because That's really nice. I like to do toe-up socks. I like to do socks two at a time, and I'm working from the inside and the outside of this ball. And the I other like thing... The heel you did, too. Yeah, this is um, a, an eye of partridge heel. She mm -hmm. wrote that into the pattern. But take a look at the two socks, and here's what's another interesting thing about hand-painted yarns. One sock is worked from the inside and one sock is worked from the outside and this sock's a little bit darker than this one. Right. And that's because when you work with hand-painted yarns, somebody has physically put the dye on right. and the dye may not penetrate all the way through the skein in exactly the same way. So if you're working from one end of the ball, you may get a slightly different color combination mm -hmm. than from the other end of the ball. Well, if you wanted to gift these to me, I wouldn't complain about that at all. <laughs> But the, but the point here, right, is that, I mean, on socks, to me, that doesn't matter. And I love, I love hand-painted yarns because every skein is unique. But if you were working this into a sweater or a poncho, you might want to mix up your skeins and do a bit of striping yeah. without actually striping. You right. could do what Barb did on her poncho with the same colorway in a hand-painted yarn just to blend the colors right. together a little bit more and not get any visible stripes. But who cares, really? I mean, they're going to be shoved inside a shoe oh. most of the time. This is just going to feel beautiful against your skin. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I mean, it, it, it doesn't matter to me at all that there's a different... In fact, I like that. I like, I like my things to be unique. And tell us about this. This is um, from Mrs. Brown's Bags. This is Jody Brown, and this is a... They're called a DPN... Um, case, but I use them for my circular. So maybe pop genius? that off, Barb, and just show. This. Yeah. So yeah. Jody's got these designs. So you just you can either use them with your double pointed needles or with your circulars. And what it does for me is it keeps my precious Addies from being damaged in transit right. when I shove them into my uh, project bag. Um, and so I really snap. like that. And then everything goes back in right. with no tangles, right. no mess. That's and lovely. And then it keeps the needles from poking into my ball. I, I sometimes see people do that. They take their needles and they shove them into their ball. And I wince a little bit when they do that because they're splitting the yarn. Yeah. Um, so this is a very handy tool for keeping your needles separate from your yarn and still making sure that your project doesn't come undone. Have you got anything better. else in there? Um, I have, uh, yes, I have a pair of... Uh, can you show us? Anything you can show us? Sure, sure. This is another work in progress. So I went camping, and when I go camping, I take nothing but socks. <gasps> because that they're... cute little bag. Where'd yeah, you get that, that one? That was from um, Minneapolis. Remember, oh. that was my prize That's in that right. class we took. So this is... Um, I guess you'll notice on the turvy topsy socks, I'm using two circulars because I that's my preferred method of knitting yeah. socks. This and one this I'm one. doing magic loop because I'm using those magic Chiagu uh, knitting needles I'm that we using talked those about too, last time. And I really quite like them. Yeah, so this is Arna and Carlos Perfect socks. Um, oh, many this one I split this into cool. two balls. Okay. Because this is the yarn that has the yellow. Um, the strand of yellow yarn in it. Right. And so did you, you can cut have it off two. already? I did. I cut it off and I made two balls. And I used the yellow to crochet over um, a couple of our tent um, cords <laughs> so that I wouldn't trip on them in the middle of the night because so it is a bright yellow. Just for anybody who doesn't know, this yarn comes with a big piece of yellow string on the end. And you're right. supposed to go to, to exactly the spot where that stops cut it off and start your sock there, right. and then both socks will match perfectly. Right, so when you're done your first sock and you keep pulling on the yarn, you get to the second strand of yellow and you cut it off and you start your mm -hmm. second sock there. So I did that I, and um, I just made two balls and then I'm working them from the toe up. So you, you can like see that, that they are perfect. Do you like that sort of thing that, you know, matchy matchy sock I'm, you know, you a... no I'm not a fussy about my socks matching mm -hmm. but um, since the yarn was set up this way I thought why not right yeah. um, what I really like about this yarn is that my my, my buds Arna and Carlos uh, designed it and I really love the way the colors are working out yes. so if you do care about having perfectly matched socks Perfect by Regia P-A-I-R Fect is the yarn for you Yeah, and I think we've got that on our website Right? Mm, no. Okay. No, you have to call the store, but we'll we'll help you out. No problem. Or send us an email, and we'll send you some some color links so you can oh, you can have beautiful. your pair of socks. And then nice I've been using job. been using my my new sock ruler right. yeah, to measure are... to 
measure my socks so I know when to put the heel to I know when to put the heel in. They're handy, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah. So those are my whips and Very my nice. finished objects. Very nice. <laughs> Good All job. Right. So Christmas in July mm -hmm. is our, our kind of like our next topic. Okay. Um, we're doing lots of workshops, as we said before. Um, we're also, uh, we also got a couple of cute projects that we thought you might like to do, whether or not you take the workshop. This one's called, uh, this is the mini top-down sweater. It's a pattern oh. by Susan B. Anderson. Um, it's a paid pattern on Ravelry, so you can, you can definitely download this. So this is perfect for the cal that we have yes. in August. That's right. Right? That's right. If you want to do a Susan B. Anderson knit along and you just and you don't have a lot of time and you have lots of scraps of yarn, this is the project for you. Mm -hmm. There's cardigans and there are pullovers. Okay. And then, uh, speaking of uh, Minneapolis, again, we met um, uh, Karen Lewinsky. Um, she's... Uh, She's one of the organizers for Yarn Over, which is the event we went to. And she's designed these mini, uh, well, it's not so mini in this one, but they're mini mittens that you use for advent calendars. There's one, there's uh, 24 different mitten patterns and they're all Scandinavian inspired. She used fingering weight yarn uh, to make them so the mittens that she makes will fit in the palm of your hand. And we're using our um, in-house Epic yarn because for the workshop, we felt it would be better to use a worsted weight yarn. So this is a sample that Suzanne, our instructor, knit up. And um, Barb likes to put it on her hand because this sample is big enough. Yeah. You can actually fit um, your hand and your kid's hand in it. So it if you didn't knit them all, you could knit one to 12. You could have the 12 days of Christmas, or you could just knit two and give them to your favorite person. Um, and you can put the number on or not. So those are a couple Lovely. of our Christmas in July workshops that did you notice the little buttons on there? I did, yes, because we sewed them on. It's such a cute attention yeah. to detail. Barb, Barb buys buttons as well as yarn, and she bought these tiny, tiny little oh. buttons, and so we picked out four of them and sewed them on the cardigan to keep it nice and closed cute. when we hang it up for a decoration. Nice. Anything else going on with Christmas in July? Uh, well, we've just got lots of, lots of workshops, but also lots of inspirations. I think you brought in some Christmas stocking kits mm -hmm. um, for people. So maybe yeah. show us those. Sure. Quick. So oh, these are you. from a Canadian company. Um, this sweet is, Paprika. Yeah, Sweet Paprika Designs. So this one's open so you can, I know oh, they're right. going to crunch and get so on the microphone, but this kit um, comes with the yarn that you need to create a beautiful Christmas stocking. Right. And then the felt to line it. This is a really nice idea yeah. if you're doing stranded color work because um, you have those strands on the inside. So this way you can cut out an insert and put it inside so everything you put in doesn't catch on the strands on the inside. Right. And this is a lovely uh, hand dyed yarn, a merino. It's called Minuet, and you can buy these in kits here, but you can also go to their website and buy the yarn, and it's fantastic. That's so if you're looking nice. for a nice Canadian yarn, right. this is a great one. So we have three designs, yep. three kits that we brought in from Sweet right. Paprika. One is called an icicle. It's blue with, um, with embellished Stars icicles on, on the front. it. It's really pretty. Yep. And then a holly is green and red. Yeah. And then you've got a brand new one that they did, right? They just finished this design, and this is an argyle stocking. Nice. Isn't that neat? That's really nice. So have one of those hanging by your fireplace. That would be a really Or all nice, three. Or all three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think we've got a nice selection of, or a good quantity of kits, too. So hopefully everyone will get one. Yeah. Fabulous. So there you go, you've got some inspiration for knitting up your Christmas goods uh, now. Get them done early. The other one that's really popular this time of year is our fuzzy foot socks or felted slippers. Um, that's these ones right here. And uh, there's the patterns available for that on Ravelry and on our website. And if you want a kit, we can put together a kit for we you. We do as well. lots of kits on that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I get a, this mitten too. Oh, right. So this yeah. is your Ann Bud. Well, you finished your. your... I finished my Ann Bud, but I. <laughs> I think, you know, you can never have enough mittens come Christmas time. Right. And so I'm knitting another one out of our Eden. Oh, beautiful. And Kids Okay Stripe. Nice. So this one's going to be different. It's going to start to change colors as they go up. These are the heavenly mittens. Yes. Yes. That's, That's the one. That's this pattern from mm -hmm. Anne. Yeah. It's lined. 
I didn't. Uh, oh yeah, I did the lace um, yeah. chart on it. Yeah. You didn't put beads on this one. No, no beads on no. this one. Look at so, how how loved your pattern yes. is. <laughs> well, that's because I shove it in my Mrs. Brown's bag. Yes. As Jody made this one for me, and I love these bags. Yes. Yeah, if you're, if you're having a hard time finding Mrs. Brown's bags on Mrs. Brown's shop, know that we ha we carry them here in the store and we have a really nice selection of them. Yes. And it's a yeah. great, great, great bag. Nothing better for your projects. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. This one actually got, or someone, someone actually tried to break into our car to steal this. <gasps> You left your knitting on the front seat. I did. Oh, man. And they, they didn't get into our car, luckily enough. They kind of broke the window, but it was all kind of... They couldn't get through. They couldn't get through. Oh, so man. my Mrs. Brown's bag was safe, but our car was all messed up. These are, these are the horror stories we hear from our customers, too, about <laughs> fires and thefts and <laughs> losses. You know, they, they come in to replace their Addies because the dog ate one. You know, yeah. Uh, it's, it's sad. So I'm glad, glad yours wasn't stolen. Yes. So we have a few more. Um, we should talk about our flash oh, mob, a yarn. Yes. And then we'll just talk about a few prizes that we're going to give away, and then we're done. Okay. All right. So tell us about flash mob All this right. month. Well, last month we did a flash mob with Richard DeVries uh, on his Papino base, which is a beautiful 100% superwash merino. Um, we sent him Jody Brown's inspiration picture. It was a beautiful uh, shot, and he sent us back yarn that looked like lavender fields. Right, he called amazing. that one Luberon. Luberon. And we sold out within, I think, 24 hours? Yeah. Maybe 48 Very hours fast. at the most? Yeah. So now he's been busy at the dye pots, um, dyeing up Tracy's colorway. And Tracy sent an inspiration picture. We'll have to post it so you can see it. but. It's um, beautiful burgundies and grays and rich kind of ready uh, colors. And so Richard came back with a yarn that he calls... What? What? <laughs> and for those of you who know the grocery girls, that's Tracy's favorite line. What? So this is what? Oh, this is beautiful. It is beautiful. Now this is such an interesting shade because it's got burgundies in it and it's got, but they're, they're burgundies with a gray tone to tonality right. to them. It's so, like that lavender yes. color. Yeah, lavender gray, yeah. You know, yeah. it's a lot of um, burgundies have kind of a blue tone to them and this one has sort of a gray overtone to it. Right. Now, he told me that he's also going to send um, a burgundy semi-solid and a gray semi-solid to go along with so this. We'll <coughs> Excuse me, we'll have those for a flash mob on the 20th Fingers of July. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it still hasn't arrived in the back room, but okay. we're hoping. Okay, that would be lovely. So this goes, um, this goes up on sale. Uh, or for sale on uh, July, July 20th at 6 p.m. Yeah. Uh, we always open it to online orders first and then into the store uh, the next morning. What? That's great. What? <laughs> That's right. So Pipino is a fingering weight, 100% merino yarn. Right. With a high twist on it. It's beautiful for, for um, anything. anything. Yeah. I mean, you know, one will do a pair of sport socks. To a regular pair, yeah. Um, but you can do shawls. Like think about all the fade combinations that are so popular out there right, right now. And I used six of uh, Richard DeVries's uh, yarns uh, skeins to do a skirt. Right. Um, and so if you wanted to do something like that, a bigger project, sweaters, um, skirts, mm -hmm. anything like that, shawls. It's a it's a beautiful yarn. Great. Get some flash what? mob. Okay. Okay. Um, and again, if you want to know about Flash Mob, uh, the best place um, to find out about things like that is to subscribe to our newsletter. You mm -hmm. can do that on our website, rivercityyarns.com. Um, we also have a Flash Mob section on our online store, but the newsletter is really the best place um, to find out about it because um, our social media folks send out a special little announcement when Flash Mob comes mm -hmm. out to our newsletter subscribers. And I was going to say, too, I think we have a tab on our online store for flash mob yep. right yeah because we still have some spring has sprung right and tracy and jody are doing their the shinny mittens right out of that so um, if anybody wants some 
Yes. Well, uh, is it hard to find though? Uh, I don't, well, uh, it's technical difficulties, but let's see what we can do um, between now and the time this video airs to make sure that spring is sprung is under the flash mob tab. Uh, you might have course. to Google it on the online store or something. I, think uh, I will make sure it's <laughs> prominent. Yeah, because that's my job. Okay. <laughs> so you're holding some Sun Valley Fibers yarn yes. in here. We wanted to show you this. We, show, we showed this to you before, but we want to show you this because this, this is going to be part of the prize pack for um, folks who participated in our Ann Bud Knit Along on our Ravelry uh, forum. So if, if you'd like to get in on some prizes, mm -hmm. um, join us for our Knit Alongs. We've got another one coming up in August mm -hmm. for uh, Susan B. Anderson, and the details will be on our Ravelry uh, group page. Um, but these are um, some skeins that we're going to give out to some um, lucky folks who finished their Ann Bud Knit Along projects, and we'll uh, announce the names um, at the end of this podcast mm -hmm. on a credit screen. Yeah, I was going to say the ladies or the ladies um, from Sun Valley Fibers yes. couldn't have got it better with their, their colorways on this one because this looks just like greenery. Oh, does from it? The Pantone. Oh, yeah. Perfect. It's this beautiful, you know, shade of green. Mid green. green. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And look at these ones. This one's called Delphinium and Strut Your Stuff. Yes. Yeah. Lovely. There's gorgeous. They're gorgeous yarns. They so feel really, really some nice. prizes that we'll be giving out very soon. And then we have one more prize that we want to do. We're again really um, thankful for all of you who have sp subscribed to our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. it's, every day, it's kind of fun to to take a look at the subscriptions and see them going up. And so that's that's and very we're, exciting. We're really grateful that um, you guys like what we're doing, you know, <laughs> and that um, you want to come and spend your time and watch. Yes. And so if there's any questions that you have, too, let us know. We'd love to be able to um, focus this right on things that you want to really know about. Right. So we have a prize, too. We're going to do a draw, a random draw, for uh, one of our YouTube subscribers um, and give out a prize that our social media manager, Aya, brought back from Japan. Mm. Maybe you can show us that yes. one, too. It's Look a it really is. gorgeous, um, soft and fluffy alpaca yarn. Um, from from Japan and we want to give that to a, a lucky subscriber so we will do a draw mm -hmm. and we have put three a, skeins of this it would make a yeah. beautiful cowl mm -hmm. yeah nice and chunky or a hat or mittens soft that isn't is. it yeah isn't it fabulous and the color is such a pretty yes. pastel -y purple there you go Tracy eat your heart out Jody <laughs> that's Jody's color is it yeah okay yeah um, anyway um, we love it and we love you, and so we want to uh, spread some of that love. Yeah. And so we'll do a little draw and announce a name at the end of this podcast. So keep watching. Mm -hmm. so I think I think, think that's it. I think we're done. We've got to wrap it up and go and get off to do other things like cleaning the store. So yeah. <laughs> so have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again next month on uh, episode seven. Wow. See you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.